Hey folks, recently Moog reissued the Mini Moog Model D with the eye-watering price of $5,000. Now a lot of people looked at this price and they thought it was way too expensive, but I tend to not think so. I mean, I'm not going to spend $5,000 on any synthesizer, but at least with Moog you have one, it's carrying Bob Moog's name on it, is the company who created the first portable synthesizer. So they are a legacy brand, but they're also pricing themselves as a luxury brand. Just like people don't buy a Rolex because it tells time better. But if you want a cheaper option, yes please, and you don't mind being on mobile, then you can pick up the Model D app for iOS. Not bad. Okay, but on to the subject for this video. Why buy when you can build? Today I'm gonna to show you how to get started making your own synth pad, and for this I'm gonna be using the Logic Sampler, but you could really use anything. Surge is a great open source option that is cross-platform that might be worth checking out, but the principles are the same for both. To get started, we're gonna need a wavetable file, and all the wavetable file is is a single cycle of a waveform. There is open source software that I'll go more into depth later on, like Wave Edit to create your own wavetables, but we're gonna use Adventure Kid Waveforms. It is a large public domain collection of a whole bunch of different waveforms. All right, so now we'll jump into Logic and we'll create a new project, a new Logic project. And it doesn't matter what kind of instrument we select because we're just gonna drag a sound in here and we'll create our own sampler instrument with it. So I've navigated to the Adventure Kid wavetable files and I'm gonna drag in the first saw. If you drag it over here, then you can go to sampler zone per note. All right, here we go. And this will create an instrument for us in Logic Sampler right away. You may need to move around what the starting pitch is for the root note, but since I just have one instrument, I'm just gonna leave it like it is now. So this is great that we have an instrument started, but now we wanna start making it sound a little more interesting. This is basically our oscillator section, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this sound with just copy and paste, and pan one of them to the left, my microphone's in my way, and the other one to the right. Then I'll detune both of these sounds slightly, and it's gonna make a thicker sound overall. So the left side I will make 0.05, and the right side we will increase by five cents. Turn it down a little bit just to compensate. <laughs> So that sounds much fuller, but now we wanna shape the sound a little bit more. And to do that, we're gonna use an amplitude envelope right here. With this, we can affect the attack, the decay, our sustain, and our release. And they have some more advanced shapes right here. If you wanted it to sound more like a piano, you can have a really fast attack with a sharp decay and then add some release at the end. But we're more interested in having a pad sound. And for that, we're gonna have a a little bit longer of an attack, we'll say one and a half seconds, and our release will be one and a half seconds too. Here's what that sounds like. It's already starting to sound a little patty at this point, but we wanna add a filter to it. And so here we have a low pass filter where we can set our cutoff and our resonance. This is what the cutoff sounds like changing. And here's our resonance. If I turn it up, you can really hear it when you turn the cutoff knob. So now in this mod matrix, what we wanna do is we want to use this envelope and have it act as a second envelope, but instead of affecting our amplitude, we're going to have it work with the filter. So I'm gonna slightly mimic the same shape that we have here, but I want it to continue moving. So I'm gonna give it a little bit longer decay and then we'll add our release here. And that's gonna be affecting our cutoff value. So if I slide this down some, let's hear what that sounds like. And that just gives the sound some more movement whenever you're sustaining a chord. But even at that, once you reach the end of this decay, the sound becomes kind of static. So to keep it moving, we're gonna add a second LFO. A LFO is a low frequency oscillator. I don't wanna change this one that's already here because that is what is affecting our mod wheel. So instead, I just added a second one here. If you add it here, it'll add it down here in your modulators. Alternatively, you can add you know, different envelopes and filters like that. 
and then just delete them if you're done. One thing to note, don't do edit undo in here. If for some reason, if you do edit undo, then it undoes stuff in your actual project and we just wanna stay here. Okay, another thing I didn't mention is for your amplitude envelope, if you change this velocity right here, if you move it all the way down, then there is no velocity control. So like, it doesn't matter how hard you push down on the keys. That's kind of how some old vintage synthesizers worked anyways, is like they were on and off switches. Um, I'll leave those dynamics in here, but I am gonna lessen it to just 10 decibels so it doesn't have that huge jump. Okay, back to our LFO, I'm gonna decrease the rate right here. And I'm also gonna have this LFO affecting our filters cut off. And I don't even need it to move a whole lot. And let's hear how that sounds. Just so that you can hear the movement, I'm gonna increase that rate for now. You can see how that cutoff continues to move. So it's almost like the LFO is the hand on the knob turning it. So let's move that lower. We have everything affecting the filter that we want, but we also want to affect our pitch a little bit more. It might be nice to have the notes kind of bend into our target note. So I'm going to add a third envelope here, increase our decay time, and have that target our pitch. Here we go. I'll start out with the low and you can hear it bend into our note. You hear that? I'll make it really extreme. But I like it a little more subtle, so it's almost like a tape effect. And as you're doing this, and if things don't sound just right to your ears, you can go around and you can move all these things. That's what's kind of fun about it, is you get to architect your own sound. You can also open up this details panel, and I'm gonna add two voices for unison. So now each note is actually going to be playing four voices, the ones we had on the right and left. But the reason I'm doubling it here is you can also change a random detune amount. So I'll do that for say five cents. And let's hear how that sounds. I might have to lower the volume again. Okay, this LFO2 that is affecting our filter, I also want that to affect the pitch so that whenever it gets a little bit on the lower end of the spectrum, I want it to detune slightly. All right, so you'll notice here the only thing that we are using are really these envelopes and our LFOs, and those are affecting either the pitch or the filter's cutoff value. And we have a very basic amplitude envelope sound. And so putting it all together, this is how it sounds. And there's so much more you can do with it. You can obviously have different voices here for your wavetables, changing the shapes of your envelopes, having your LFOs targeting different things. But hopefully this gets you started in learning how to use some of these ingredients to make your own synth pad. Thanks for watching the video, folks. I hope this was helpful in your synth making journey. Be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments what you're working on, and I'll see you all next time. Kick.